it. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, hi. Um, do you want to have, here's your two choices, okay? No. Test. Oh, hi. No, well, we, we decided we went two different ones, right? That was what we decided yesterday, okay? And we're going to wrap up chapter six today, okay? Here's your choices. On Friday, 20, per, uh, 20 point multiple choice only, no FRQ. Monday, okay, multiple choice and FRQ. At some point, we're going to have to do the FRQ, but you, but it, okay, it's totally up to you. Monday, okay, let's close your eyes. Close your eyes, okay, yes. Lily, Gilly. Hey, uh, Max, I said that in my freshman class. Did someone actually leave it? No way. In my freshman class, was like, oh my God. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's your choices. Friday, 20. Okay, Monday, 20 FRQ. Okay, so who's voting Friday? Okay, who's voting Monday? Okay. Monday, Saturday. Okay, so Monday it is, okay. <laughs> Monday will be a test and I will put out a re review sheet sometime today, kind of how we do and uh, we'll go from so there. Chap just chapter six, okay, which is what we're doing right now. Okay, so we're talking about, if we would, I would have combined it in the chapter seven, so you would have like done like two FRQs. Yeah, yeah, okay. So multiple choice on Friday, Mul no, no, multiple Monday. choice and FRQ Monday. Everything's on Monday. Nothing's on Friday. I thought we decided to do it Yeah, we did. So there's a chapter six test and then chapter seven. That's what you decided, right? Okay, rather than six and seven together. There would have been a 40 point multiple choice. What's that? Okay. <laughs> You gotta wait till tomorrow to you become an adult, right? To really understand these deep, deep yeah. things. All right, uh, let's uh, so let's let's finish up this chapter. Let's talk about uh, where we were yesterday, and we were leaving off with our wonderful wolves, right? And uh, and so let's talk let's talk about wolves and uh, and Isle Royal. So once again, Isle Royal. It's in the UP of uh, Michigan, uh, so closer to Canada. They joke that you can actually see uh, Canada uh, uh, or uh, from there. Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I pretended like I could when I've been there. Okay, uh, I'll have to ask Marina what, if she's actually technically seen Canada. Okay, I think we left with the cliffhanger of uh, dad and daughter. And we were oh, trying yeah. to figure out if dad and daughter were going to survive and why uh, why we would want wolves back. I showed you my picture of Wolf Peterson. Wolf Peterson was one of the guys that started uh, this whole thing. So uh, uh, let me ask you this question. Have, have wolves always been on uh, this island? Probably not. Okay, nope. And yeah, moose always been on this island. No, Probably not. not. It's in the middle of the lake. How in the heck? Do ice. yeah, ice, ice, baby. Boom, 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 boom. You guys remember a few years ago no. uh, when when uh, we had like a, like a two weeks off of school because like, like, yeah, yeah. 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 like I would check every single day like our that map that showed like our counties and whether or not we were in like the you know the warning or that like you can't go out unless you're in emergency. And it was like 30 degrees. Oh, yeah. I remember bundling up no and walking to yeah. CVS, and like it's like nobody's out there, right? CVS is open for, I guess, drugs and stuff, but uh, I, I wanted to venture out. I was going crazy. Did anyone do the, the fun uh, trick where you take the boiling water yeah. and you throw it up? And it just, that was so cool. I was like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there is some fun things to do in the winter, but. So during that time, there was not just dad and daughter, okay, there was a lot more wolves. So they were thinking, they were like crossing their fingers. They're like, maybe uh, Lake Superior will freeze over. Well, it was actually the first time all of the Great Lakes froze completely. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a Great Lake in the wintertime, 
but it's nuts. Like I went to uh, Traverse City for spring break one year. Horrible idea, by the way. And uh, it was, I mean, well, it was, it was fun, but like we had Ira and he was like one and he screamed the entire time. No, it was like two. He kept saying, oh, oh, I feel like that. Uh, and so we left that trip early, but um, but it was cool. We went to Lake and the, the ice formations of like, it was like there was a wave and it just froze. Like it's crazy. Yeah, you like ever see like, this in the winter? There's like Are lakes. you on Superior? You're, you're on Michigan. You're on Superior? Um, I don't... Where's your town or what's your city? Fahrenheit. That's like... It's like... I've been up there and been frozen. We frozen after the operation. Weird, right? Huge walls of ice. Oh, it's it is otherworldly. Like we've, we've seen like the waterfalls in the winter when they freeze. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What's it called again? Paradise, uh, Michigan. Yeah. We frozen after the operation. Is it near hell? Mm, <laughs> Just kidding. There is a hell, Michigan, though, right? Yes. Am I? Like, am I out? Wow, I've been to hell. <laughs> and back. All right, here we go. So you are, here we go, kids. So paradise is right on Superior. There's Sault Ste. Marie. Here's Lake Superior. Here's Iowa Royal. Okay. Yeah. Cool. The UP is awesome. Oh yeah. It's so it's, it's awesome. so cool. So you could you could have potentially seen this. All right. So here's what they were hoping. They're like, okay, all the lakes froze over. So all the biologists were up there were like, let's see what happens. They thought that maybe some wolves would come over, right? And that has happened before. They had in around 1992, there was a wolf that was bigger, stronger, genetically superior, and he came did it with all the girls and then like like beefed up the population man and also made the population uh, uh more stable well here's what happened unfortunately um the the wolves left okay so wolves no. like took off instead of like wolves coming there they're like peace i'm out man this is like a toxic place right so that's how you peace out i'm out okay so uh so then we were left with the two so the idea here is that we want to we you know we want to see uh, and it's kind of really a philosophical debate. Do you let nature do nature, or do we as humans intervene? And uh, and they decided that uh, Isle Royal was too precious um, to of a habitat to just let it go. So they brought wolves in. Now uh, those wolves have finally had some pups, which are pretty exciting. And uh, gosh, I didn't check this before this lecture. I'm, I apologize, but I want to see what the current wolf or uh, wolf population yeah, is. When I was in your biology class, we were talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They hadn't introduced yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Isle Royal, let's see. Current wolf population on Isle Royal. Let's see what pops up here. Uh, how many new pups are maybe in terms of see, this is, uh, here we go. Surprise pups. Uh, a missing wolf and a lot of tension. Uh, first wolf pups in several years have been born in uh, Michigan's remote Isle Royal. Surprise researchers have been tracking a large new batch of wolves transplanted in the wilderness there in the last two years. In addition to new arrivals, recent, shut up. Uh, you guys have ad blockers, I like them. Yeah. I think I did it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. In addition to new rivals, recent research shows there's been some predator drama taking shape on this. Of course, there is on this archipelago in Lake uh, Superior. Small groups of wolves have been uh, begun stalking out territory on the island. And the last old island born female has not seen surveys from the uh, during surveys from their foot. So, who knows what happened? Um, that I think the dad died. Uh, results released today are from the 62nd year. It's pretty crazy. Scientists are continuing gathering information. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. While it's not clear how many new pups there may be, Michigan uh, researchers and partners believe there are up to 14 adult wolves on the island and an estimated 1,876 moose. That represents about a 9% decrease in the moose count. Uh, a loss is likely to be seen as good for the island's rebalancing of predator prey levels.
Um, that dip is credited to not only the new wolves taking down moose alone in groups, but moose starved. Uh, star uh, but let's talk about those pups. A couple of them were born on the island sometime in 2019. Their existence seemed to be a bit of a surprise. They noticed one pup, a pup as a mystery wolf when they saw one of the older female wolves who had been transplanted from Canada, associated with two wolves they didn't recognize. They knew the female wolf, which had been fitted with the GPS collar, one that had been trapped on Nishib Picton Island off the coast of Ontario, brought to uh, Isle Royal in early 2019. But the two wolves she was seen hanging around with, quote, have thrown the researchers a curveball. One was clearly a juvenile wolf with no collar, collar and no ear tags like the other new wolves. The other wolf was a mystery, an uncolored wolf, collared wolf that researchers have not seen before and whose markings do not match those of any transplanted wolves on the island's last native wolf. Scientists tapped some of the top wolf behaviorists. Um, they, they affirmed it was likely a pup. The pup was born on the island, but may not have been conceived oh, before the new wolves were relocated. Wow, that's wolf, there's wolf. Uh, let's see. Okay, pretty cool stuff. Um, so there you go. So maybe 14, which is like, that doesn't seem like a, a bunch, but remember from our data, there really was only um, a total of um, 50. You know, like, like that's not too much, but you know, we were definitely in the, in the 2,500 2, days, but then that harsh winter like killed um, all those uh, moose up. Okay, all right. Any questions about the wolves? It's uh, it's really fascinating to me. All right, here we go. There's, I guess I've said all of these things. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, um, Yellowstone. Okay, so uh, Yellowstone, I've never been there. Uh, I want to go really bad, but uh, I still have been there. Uh, so uh, wolves were eradicated. By the way, uh, were there wolves in Indiana at one time? Yeah, 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 yeah there were. In fact, if you know, I think I maybe mentioned this before, but you know, Tracy, the real bubbly, uh, she loves She's a lunch lady. She's so happy. Oh, she calls everybody honey and sweetie. Yeah. You know, I so she lives on. Uh, have I talked about her yet? I thought she was. Okay, yeah. So her family killed the last wolf. They have a picture of like all these. It's an old timey picture, but they were like oh, the last wolf, wolf in Wabash County was killed by the Wilcox family uh, and the flora, those floras, the flora dairy, F-L-O-R-A, um, all of the, they're all related, intermingling out there. So uh, they, because everybody, can, number one, the wolf is seen as the ultimate evil. Just look at even stories, right? Big bad wolf, right? Huff and puff, blow your house down. Little red riding hood, grandma gets eaten by the wolf, you know, dresses up, you know, that sort of thing. People, even though there's not, you know, all these documented cases of wolves like killing people, you know, that people are scared of them, right? So you said like we can't. We can't, we don't have enough space. Yeah, well, it's a major problem, yeah. There's a lady that lives like close to my grandma that has like 10 or 15 like wolves. Oh yeah. I don't know if they're true, but they're right. Like, they're right. Yeah, that stuff freaks me out. Like, you know, and I, I've talked to the DNR about like, you know, you always hear like somebody's like, oh, I saw a, on my trail cam, there was a mountain lion. I swear, I swear to God it was. There's and one. There's wolves, you know, all these things. So uh, I will tell you that if you ever hear something that sounds like a screaming woman in the woods, like really loud, like crazy, like she's getting like murdered, um, that's a bobcat. And we have tons of bobcats. In Indiana. I've my seen, mom saw I've seen them. Chicago. Yeah, cool. I've only seen one in my life. Uh, Justice has one in his on his property. They saw it in a tree, and we can ask him about that when it, when it comes back. Um, I saw on a trail cam picture from the DNR. Uh, they showed me this picture of what was everyone thought it was a uh, um, a mountain lion, but it was just a ripped bobcat. Like <laughs> this bobcat was like the like the Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, like a bobcat. It's like every muscle was defined. It was a cool pick. I wish I had that pick, but. Didn't they reintroduce like mountain lions to Salaries? They did not. We, so I got to fortunately be a, that would be amazing if that was true, but like people be freaking 
freak out. Okay, uh, we re we reintroduced. So, and I got this was the coolest thing in 1998. They had a giant celebration at Salamone where there were thousands of people to release river otters. So they brought them in. But then we got this secret, um, like they did it in two places, Salamone, and then on this guy's property, his name's Randy Showalter. You may know the Showalters, Diana, Randy Showalter. He was the head president of the Turkey Foundation. If it weren't for Randy Showalter of Turkey Foundation, turkey hunting would not exist in Indiana. So we didn't have turkeys either, okay? And so, uh, so anyway, so we got to go there. It was us, the, the uh, DNR, and this guy who was a photographer. And these, these things were cute. So there was like, we released eight that day, I think. And now they're thinking about a season on River Otters because they've just populated. Now, some people love them. Okay, they've really been good for the habitat, but people piss, get pissed because the, the River Otters have gotten into people's ponds and just wiped out their stock, right? So no, people just want like for fur, River Otter, they want it for the fur. You, you can eat anything, man. I know a guy, no joke, a guy that eats uh, groundhog. Ew. Yeah, no joke. He <laughs> eats groundhog. It's pretty gross. All right, let's get back to uh, real quick our wolves in um, at, at um, uh, uh, Yellowstone. So there were no wolves there. So uh, they reintroduced these wolves, and it was a big deal. A lot of ranchers didn't want it. So an uh, organization called the NRDC um, decided that here's what we'll do: if you have a cow, you or, you know bull, steer, whatever. And it gets killed by a wolf. You have proof that it's killed by a wolf, we'll pay for it. Okay? So there's a fund that says, you know, this should not be a problem. Do you think that made the ranchers any, feel any better? No, no. no, still pissed. Okay, so, but let's look at like something called a trophic cascade. Trophic cascades are unbelievable. And this is how wolves change rivers. That was so good, wasn't it? What the heck? Exciting scientific findings of the past half century has been the discovery of widespread trophic cascades. A trophic cascade is an ecological process which starts at the top of the food chain and tumbles all the way down to the bottom. And the classic example is what happened in the Yellowstone National Park in the United States when wolves were reintroduced in 1995. Now, we, we all know that wolves kill various species of animals, but perhaps we're slightly less aware that they give life to many others. Before the wolves turned up, they'd been absent for 70 years, that the numbers of deer, because there was nothing to hunt them, had built up and built up in the Yellowstone Park, and despite efforts by humans to control them, they'd managed to reduce much of the vegetation there to almost nothing. They'd just grazed it away. But as soon as the wolves arrived, even though they were few in number, they started to have the most remarkable effects. First, of course, they killed some of the deer, but that wasn't the major thing. Much more significantly, they radically changed the behavior of the deer. The deer started avoiding certain parts of the park, the places where they could be trapped most easily, particularly the valleys and the gorges. And immediately those places started to regenerate. In some areas, the height of the trees quintupled in just six years. Bare valley sides quickly became forests of aspen and willow and cottonwood. And as soon as that happened, the birds started moving the number of songbirds and migratory birds started to increase greatly. The number of beavers started to increase because beavers like to, to eat the trees. And beavers, like wolves, are ecosystem engineers. They create niches for other species. And the dams they built in the rivers um, provided habitats for otters and muskrats and ducks and fish and reptiles and amphibians. The wolves killed coyotes 
And as a result of that, the number of rabbits and mice began to rise, which meant more hawks, more weasels, more foxes, more badgers. Ravens and bald eagles came down to feed on the carrier that the wolves had left. Bears fed in it too, and their population began to rise as well, partly also because there were more berries growing on the regenerating shrubs. And the bears reinforced the impact of the wolves by killing some of the calves of the deer. But here's where it gets really interesting. The wolves changed the behavior of the rivers. They began to meander less. There was less erosion, the channels narrowed, more pools formed, more riffle sections, all of which were great for wildlife habitat. The rivers changed in response to the wolves. And the reason was that the regenerating forests stabilized the banks so that they collapsed less often, so that the rivers became more fixed in their course. Similarly, by driving the deer out of some places and the vegetation recovering on the valley sides, there was a soil erosion because the vegetation stabilized that as well. So the wolves, small in number, transform not just the ecosystem of the Yellowstone National Park, this huge area of land, but also its physical geography. This is all about the reintroduction of wolves in uh, in Yellowstone, and yeah, it's a good one. This is all about trophic cascades. Okay, so this is called the wolf's tooth, tooth, and the importance of that. So here's a here's a term that we haven't talked about yet, and that's keystone species. And uh, um, I just noticed it there, so we'll come back to that. But it's just saying that the wolf is important, right? It can completely alter habitats. For us, it, the beaver doesn't seem like that that important of an organism, but dang it is, because those beaver, beavers are nature's engineers and can completely change uh, uh, an area that wasn't a wetland into a wetland. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, just that little shift in water level it changes everything. Yeah. Uh, so we had, my grandpa said, uh, well, actually, I mean, yeah. There was a bunch of beavers in the trees that yeah. uh, had banded up and then was like threatening to actually butt into somebody's house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the dam. But then they ended up moving into a different spot and the deer was down there the other day, like back in the, like down in the marsh. Like, it was actually like six feet and stuff. Oh, yeah, there. cool, cool. But it had, um, since, since when they moved and made another. The beavers? Thing. Yeah. Okay. And, they have created there's a whole pond back there now. Like it used to be. Yeah, and it was never there before, right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> there and my dad said there's like four hundred ducks and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, so, cool. So it's like really weird. Now. Cool. You can see it from that uh, Google Earth. Awesome. You can, you can. You can't see it from Google Earth? I don't know if you okay. can but just we'll have to, we'll have to try it out maybe. Yeah, uh, we were also when we were in the in the bathroom uh, talking about your bobcat. Uh, it was in, you haven't heard it though, man. All right, here's some pictures. All that stuff was just in that video, okay? Uh, here's some here's some uh, stuff where we talked about this, and this should look familiar, right? Okay, so these survivorship curves, we got whale, we got squirrel, we got this. Okay, what else can we put right here like this besides whale? Humans, right, okay. Okay, could we put humans on this one? Yep, but where? what kind of humans would we have to pick? Like 1800s. Yeah, yeah, 1800s humans, right, in North Manchester. And of course, they gave me a, a dandelion here, but what else could be an example here? Frogs. Okay, frogs, yeah. Now, I did see one uh, one type four, and it went like this. Okay, see if you can figure this out. Okay, it went like this, then it went over like this, and then it went down like this. 
Okay, so it's like saying like one or two lived instead of four or five. So like a few die, but the ones that live, live long like this, and then down. Sea turtles would be more like this. I love sea turtles. Okay. They're so pink and cute. Yeah, they are cute. It'd be more like a deer. You know, a deer can have like two, two or three. Okay. Deer, right. like more than six, if they can three. get one to survive, yay. Okay. Okay. You about to hit one. Uh, real quickly, meta populations are really cool. Um, and they, uh, your book gives the example of a, um, a, a cougar there, a mountain lion. And it's a, these spatially distinct populations. And sometimes you can interact. Now, I got to tell you this story real quick. Uh, what time are we on? 1340. Okay, good. All right. So, uh, so I got to, I got to work at the dunes. Did I tell you my, ever tell you about this? Yeah, I got, took the summer and I lived in, a, in, uh, in that camper and, uh, it was so fun. Uh, that summer was awesome. So I worked with this guy named Ralph Brindell and he was working with the species called the Carner blue butterfly. We have two poster children for endangered species in Indiana. One is the Indiana bat. The second is the Carner blue butterfly. Okay, the, we have a lot of endangered species, but uh, they're not as sexy as those two. Um, in fact, like we in North Manchester, even endangered, uh, potentially endangered uh, uh, mussels. Lots of mussels are endangered. Okay, but nobody cares about a clam, right? But look at this pretty blue zebra butterfly, mussels. right? That's pretty cute. Zebra, mussels. zebra mussels are invasive species. They're nasty. Yeah. You okay. know what they do to you? Oh yeah, they cut you up. They catch yeah. you up, girl. And so, and then Indiana bat is also that, you know, that's a kind of a, uh, you know, more yeah, sexier Indiana species, bat. okay? Right, Indian, what's that? Indiana, Indiana bat. yeah, it's in, it is a federally endangered species, which is pretty cool. So this, so this carnivore blue butterfly lives in the dunes and it lives only in the dunes because it eats this plant called lupine, okay? And we planted some lupine out in the prairie, okay? That doesn't mean we're gonna get uh, any, uh, um, uh, Carnar blue butterflies, but but get this, okay? So carnar blue butterfly is a weird species. It's at the dunes, and it's also located uh, 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 a couple places out out east, but it's really not around. I have seen one; they're pretty phenomenal. Okay, all right. The tiny, the tiny. Let's Wait. see if there's one on hand. Okay, but there's a there's a bunch of none out west. I don't think. Uh, uh, last I checked. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here it is in the hand. Okay. So you can see it's tiny, right? Okay. So here's what's weird about the carnivore blue butterfly. Okay. So if I'm a carnivore blue butterfly, here's how I'm going to fly. Okay. I know I'm going to do this. I'm going to fly in here. Okay. Here I come. I'm a carnivore blue butterfly. I'll fly over here. Okay. Oh, here I come. Hi. Okay. Flying here. Now I'm going to fly over here. Okay. I want to get over there to get Elijah because he's the Butterfly. Okay, and here we go. I'm gonna fly over here. Okay, just like this. I'm gonna fly over, and now I found my mate. Okay, all right. Now, if I want to get away from my mate, I might do this. Right? Okay. Do you notice the pattern of how I'm flying around this room? Took the long way, right? And I only took the aisles, right? The open spots. I, if I was over here and I'm like, Ooh, I want to get to Elijah. Okay. If I could fly, right. Wouldn't it make sense to fly like over all of you, right? Yeah. Our blood, our blue butterfly will do that. It will only follow like fly through paths. It won't fly over stuff. It seems dumb, but that's just how it does. Okay. Yeah. Super weird. Now here's the even weirder thing about this thing. Okay. <laughs> So if we have a population of current blue butterflies over here, okay, in the dunes, so we have a, co a population of current blue, blue butterflies way over there, okay, they seem to not be able to find each other. So Ralph, this guy I worked with, has this hypothesis that these species are so genetically different than those species that they're evolving into two separate species. Okay, but guess what? His work may never be finished. Why? Because they're going extinct. They're going extinct, right? In fact, uh, a couple of years ago, he didn't see one the entire summer. Not one. Okay, over here, 
I don't know if you've ever looked at any of these pictures, okay? But right here is corner blue butterfly uh, caterpillars, okay? So I worked with Notre Dame and we went out. And so Notre Dame has these incubators. They're, they're full of corner blue butterflies and they mate and then lay eggs and then they hatch in those caterpillars. We put them in little cups that you get for like your like dipping sauces at uh, like a restaurant, right? Main view salad dressing, right? There you go. Okay. And we take a tooth or sorry, not toothbrush, a paintbrush. You pick up the caterpillar and you put it on a lupine leaf. And then we map where we put them. And then we went back to see if they were still there. And we didn't find any. Ah, it's crazy, right? You would think, oh, it's just like breed them captivity, release them, things are going to be good. Okay, they have to have a very specific condition and they have to have that lupon plant. Okay, and they, they do think, all right, you know, guess what they think the problem is and why they're going to change it. It should be your answer to everything in this class. Yeah, cl climate change. <laughs> climate change drives the plant. Yeah. Because, the, guess what, the lupin doesn't like it too hot. I like it hot, baby. But not in the loop, right? Okay. Weird. You are. No, you. Your mom. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, any questions about that? Let me see what my next slide is. I might just quit right there. Let's quit right there. Let's quit right there. Yeah. You really have my feelings. Oh, because I, I said your mom? Yeah, my mom's pretty weird. I love your mom.